she was studying nightmares, and uh, she was studying general college age population, and what she found were that gamers had fewer nightmares than anybody else. And more interestingly, they had the highest rates of lucid dreaming, which is when you realize that you're dreaming, and then you take control of the dream to do whatever you want, like go flying. And uh, it turns out, as she interviewed gamers more, she did more and more studies on gamers and dreaming, it turns out that gamers can actually control their dream selves the way they control an avatar in a game. So you guys may have had this experience yourselves. So that's pretty cool, like, gamers are dream warriors? That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so is it possible that games can give us real life superpowers? Like, that would be a good side effect. Um, okay, so that's actually what I write about in my book, Reality is Broken, looking at all of the science of how games make us better and then what we can do with it in our real lives and in the real world. And I don't want to leave you guys in suspense if you haven't read the book, but the answer to all the questions is yes. Games do bring out the best in us. They are a gateway to real life goals. They do change who we think we really are. They are protecting us from real harm, and they can give us actual superpowers. Uh, I wanted to figure out where all these superpowers are coming from, so let me just tell you a little bit more about the science of gaming and what it does for minds and bodies. Um, this is a quote that I found from a researcher who's been studying plays for decades, actually before video games were invented, um, and he had this great quote that really condensed all the science for me. He said that the opposite of play isn't work, it's depression. This is really interesting. So if you look at the clinical definition for depression, it has two really essential qualities. The first is a pessimistic sense of our own capabilities, and the second is a lack of energy, a loss of appetite to get up and do things. If you were to reverse those two traits, you would get an optimistic sense of our own capabilities and a rush of invigorating activity. And this, I think, is a perfect description of what it feels like to play a game. Right? When we sit down to play a game, we feel optimistic. We're sure that we can beat it. It doesn't matter how hard it is. And we're totally energized. We could be tired, we could be worn out, we could be frustrated, feeling terrible, and suddenly we're still staying up till 3 a.m. because we have all the energy in the world to play this game. Okay, so the opposite of play isn't work, it's depression. And it turns out that when we play games, we enter a very specific positive state of mind and body. A scientist call it eustress, which comes from the Greek word you or well-being and stress. And this is really interesting because normally when we talk about stress, we mean the negative kind. We mean feeling totally pressured to do something that we don't want to do or we're not sure we can do, we don't have enough time to do it. And when we get this external pressure, we experience stress as, uh, as frustrating or anxiety producing. And our body changes in response to negative stress. Our heart rate goes up, our breathing quickens, we have adrenaline going, we feel like we have to focus on this threat or this dangerous task that we're doing, and so we, we sharpen the attention centers for our brain. Now, what happens if we choose to tackle a challenge? What if we pick our own stress? It turns out we have exactly the same physiological changes. The heart rate up, the breathing up, the adrenaline up, the brain sharpening. But because we chose the challenge, instead of feeling it as kind of a fear or anxiety, we experience it as exhilaration, as drive, as motivation, as, as a desire to do something extraordinary. And it turns out that this is a very positive state of mind and body. In fact, it's an optimal state of human being. When we're in a state of eustress, we set more ambitious goals for ourselves, we have more motivation to really keep going to get the goals, we're more resilient in the face of failure, we're more likely to ask others for help, and they're more likely to help us because we actually become more likable when we're in a state of eustress. We're optimistic, we're energized, and so people like being around us. So being in a state of positive stress is an optimal state of human being. We achieve more, we build better social networks, and we just enjoy the feeling. It's a beautiful feeling to have. Now, I can talk about eustress a lot, <laughs> but it's better just to see the faces of eustress. How many of you guys know this portrait series by Phil Soldano? This is an amazing portrait series. Uh, he, he took photos of gamers while they were playing games. So he set the camera up in front of the PC or the console. So let's, you know, the faces of eustress, right? <laughs> this is what we look like when we're playing a game. <laughs> positive 
stress. You know? this, is, this is what it feels like. Now, I really like this picture because to, to ordinary people, this might look like negative stress. To people who don't play you know, a lot of games, they would see the dilated pupils and the nostrils flaring and the lips are cursed. I mean, this guy looks like he's pretty freaked out. But you guys are gamers, so you can probably recognize the signs of optimism here. I actually work with scientists at University of California, Berkeley, who specialize in reading...